Hey y'all, it's Deep Track Zach and I am back finally for a new video. Um, it's been a while since I've made one of these in-person videos, but it's the last day of the year. So it's really my last chance to do this list. And it's uh, my top 22 vinyl finds of 2022. My top 22 of 2022. I've done this uh, the last couple of years. I did start it with a top 20 of 2020 and then a top 21 vinyl finds of 2021. So I wanted to do one for 2022. And I know that's a lot of finds. A lot of people do 10 or so or even more, but I'm gonna try to make it quick. And I've got them in alphabetical order. These aren't in the order that I found them or the order of uh, importance or anything. But um, I wanna start off by saying the reason I don't make as many videos now is because I got a new job and it's Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five type of job. I used to get a weekday or two off per week and I would go to Goodwills and, um, you know, antique stores when there wasn't as much foot traffic and when there's bigger possibility of finding things. But I've been real busy getting, uh, you know, used to my new job and getting, you know, getting some experience before I start taking extra weekdays off or stuff like that to go digging. You know, you gotta have your priorities. But it's been a good year. Um, the first six or seven months of the year was when I did, when I found most of this stuff. Um, and it was most mostly found, you know, out in the wild. Once again, like at Goodwill, antique stores, yard sales. A few of these things are online, things that I've been looking for for a long time and you just don't see out in the wild. But um, like I said, it's been a good year still. I've found some amazing things and it's been more quality over quantity this year. Um, like I said, I'm gonna start alphabetical. And the first one is this Beatles Mono Magical Mystery Tour. I have most of these. I didn't get the box set that came out, but I've acquired them over the years, you know, outside of the box set. I ordered them, ordered them on Amazon when they were $25, $30. But there were a few like this one that I didn't have. And I found this at a record store. They didn't realize what they had because it was priced $25. And as y'all know, it's worth a lot more than that. That's the Magical Mystery Tour Mono Edition, Mono Reissue. Um, the second thing, um, I'm going to file this under C for Gene Clark, but I had a reissue of this album. I love this record. It's one of my favorite country rock albums of all time and one of the most important of all time. And that's the fantastic expedition of Dillard and Clark, Doug Dillard and Gene Clark, along with, um, Bernie Ledden that went to the Eagles Chris Hillman from the Birds, and there's a few other, you know, country rock pickers that are on this. Great album. All I had was a reissue, and this one is a white label promo, and I also found this at a record store, and I don't think they thought it was a promo. It wasn't priced like a white label promo, let me just say that. So I finally got an OG, and... To make it even better, it's a white label promo. Fantastic Expedition of Dillard and Clark from 1968. All right, here's another Gene Clark. I had a reissue of this for many years, and you just don't see originals out in the wild, but that's 1974, No Other by Gene Clark. It's on the Asylum label. I think I have one of those infamous Four Men with Beards reissues. There's the Asylum, and it is near mint. Don't worry about me getting fingerprints. I washed my hands just a few minutes ago. But, uh, yeah, I got this at a record show from a dealer that I know, and he cut me a deal on it. And that'll be my forever copy of no other. All right, this, I got quite a few of these back uh, when I worked in a retail establishment. Some of you might know I had a record aisle that the owner 
let me put there. I gave him a little cut of the record sales, but uh, I would buy collections back, you know, for years and the first seven months of this year. And this one was in a collection. This is Alice Coltrane, a monastic trio. Um, Pharaoh Sanders plays with her on this. And this was, you know, the collection I bought didn't have much. There were two or three gems. And this was at the top. And uh, it's on Impulse. This is an original. Laminated, beautiful laminated cover. Um, the cover would be excellent if it weren't for the, uh, what do you call it? The bubbling up of the laminate there, which isn't too bad. I've seen a lot worse than this on um, <clears throat> some of those laminates from the 60s and 70s. But the record is near mint. Unbelievably good condition. And I'm not sure if you know, but this thing is worth couple hundred dollars if not more so what an amazing jazz find for 2022 all right let's see still in the seas here i found this at a record show i'd been looking for it for a long time and uh a guy had it below his table you know at record shows sometimes they'll have their best stuff up top then below their table they'll have some cardboard boxes with stuff in it but he had this Don Covey gem down in the bargain boxes at one of the Atlanta record shows that I went to. And if you don't know, Jimi Hendrix is a session guitarist on this record. Awesome record. I'm not sure the year on this. I think it's 1966, possibly. Don Covey Mercy. All right, here's one I had to buy online. Love this album. This is one of my favorite jazz albums of all time. Uh, it is just like a spaced out jazz fusion jam. And never seen it in the wild. It evaded me on the internet and I finally snagged a deal on one for a best offer on eBay. And it was in the shrink. It's not anymore, but that's Charles Ireland's Leaving This Planet with Freddie Hubbard and Joe Henderson on Prestige. Uh, it's an OG, of course. I don't think this has ever been reissued. It's from 1974. Just awesome, awesome album. Gatefold. And uh, it's got Leaving This Planet, the title track, Brown Eyes, awesome song. A cover of Red Clay, Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay. And that's probably just as good, if not better, than uh, Freddie Hubbard on his Red Clay album. But And it is near mint cover. Like I said, it was uh, in the shrink. Near mint cover and near mint vinyl. Charles Ireland's Leaving This Planet. Here's one I won on a live internet auction and got a heck of a deal for it. It's like the last Funkadelic album to round out my Funkadelic Parliament collection. And it had evaded me for a long time. And that's uh, Free Your Mind. And I guess I can show the rest of the title. Flash it real quick there. Free Your Mind and your blank will follow. Awesome record. There's an awesome shot of the band on the back. So now I got just about every OG Funkadelic album that you need. Yep. Awesome find. Awesome deal. Okay. Here's another jazz. Um, this was another one I got in that same collection as the uh, Alice Coltrane. And it's a great album, always a great find, but it was it's more than I thought initially. I actually made the Discogs entry for this. Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage. This is an original, and it's a mono. I think there was already a mono listed on Discogs, but not this one. This had a different, different run out 
numbers on the on the runout groove. BLP forty one ninety five Maiden Voyage Mono. This has Freddie Hubbard once again on trumpet, George Coleman on sax, Herbie on piano, Ron Carter on bass, and Anthony Tony Williams on drums. What a lineup! What an album! Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage. All right, here's one that I would probably never, ever run across an OG of, and I've been looking for it for over a decade. So I just broke down and bought a uh, import reissue, UK reissue of the Spaced Out Folk Rock uh, hidden gem, Gary Higgins, Red Hash. This is an awesome, trippy, like I said, folk. Not even folk rock, a trippy folk album. Hippie folk. I think this was recorded in 1971. And this guy eventually went to prison on a uh, some kind of gender marijuana charge for having... You know, the they got him on distribution of marijuana because he had so much. But uh, awesome record. Check this out if you've never heard it. Gary Higgins, Red Hash. Uh, good online deal. All right, here's a record store find from four or five months ago. Um, since I found this, this has been reissued as a Blue Note classic. But this is also one of my favorite jazz albums of all time. Um, that's Bobby Hutcherson, San Francisco with Harold Land. It's a corner cut, but I got it for probably half of what it was, what it's worth. And of course it's original blue note on that black and light blue label. Um, not sure. I don't think this had been reissued. That's why Blue Note Classic decided to reissue it. But love this album. Um, Going Down South. What a killer song. Um, and Harold Land is just wonderful. Supporting on saxophone. And Bobby Hutcherson, as always, is just knocking it out of the park on vibes. It's an OG of San Francisco by Bobby Hutcherson and Harold Land. Okay, here's another one I got online. I've had uh, a couple of this this musician's uh, albums on a wish list for a long time. And unfortunately, they were never pressed in America. They're all UK imports. But I finally got a good deal, and a fair deal, from Great Britain on this Wiz Jones album from 1976, Happiness is Free. Happiness Was Free. Um, that title track is awesome. Check that on, out online. I've actually made one of my uh, videos, slideshows of this song. Um, but yeah, it's got the title track, Happiness Was Free, Propinquity, which is a Michael Nesmith song, a cover of Country Comfort, the Elton John, Bernie Taupin tune, Man with a Banjo, that's an awesome song. But um, if you don't know, Wiz Jones was a folk music pioneer. Um, like, he traveled around Europe, hitchhiked and walked, and uh, starting in the late 50s, I believe. But I've always loved Wiz Jones. I love his voice, his style of picking, the acoustic guitar. And, uh, I also got another album of his this year, an import um, I think it's called Solo Flight. It's a compilation, like a double LP compilation from Great Britain. That one's a little easier to find than this one, so I decided to show this one for my one of my top 22. All right, next, this is one. Everybody, the vinyl community and record collectors always are uh, on the lookout for, and after many, many years, of pulling used ones out of the sleeves in the wild, I finally came across a Led Zeppelin 2 RL cut. 
And uh, I actually got this one at a garage sale. He actually had two versions of Led Zeppelin II. I bought both of them and I didn't look at them until I got home because they were so cheap. But uh got myself a RL. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it in this video, but no, there's not enough lighting. I'm sorry. Not enough lighting to show it, but there's the famous RL in the runout groove. Um, and it's a decent copy. I really wish it was a little better. Somewhere between VG and VG Plus. Covers of VG Plus, but I'll keep looking. Someday maybe I'll get a VG Plus or Near Mint um, to replace this one. But for now, I mean, this sounds fine. There's some crackling, but that doesn't bother me much. It's my Led Zeppelin II RL. Finally got it. Okay, this is a big one too. I've wanted this for so long. It hardly ever comes up on the internet. It's not very well known. Never seen it at a record show. And this was at another, um, I got this at the store, another collection that came in. And this collection was not that great. It was full of gospel music, a little bit of pop rock, and my jaw dropped when I saw this album. Um, that's Vin Mar Vince Martin's album, If the Jasmine Don't Get You, The Bay Breeze Will. Um, Vince Martin, if you don't know, was a folk musician. Uh, he started recording, I think, in the late 50s. Then he got together with Fred Neal in 1965 or 64 for the Martin Neal album. And this is his first solo album. He had made singles before that, like I said, in the, early, in the late 50s, early 60s. But... I love this album. This is, like like the title says, if the jasmine don't get you the Bay Breeze will, this is a folk, uh, Florida-inspired album. He uh, originally is from New York, but he moved down to Coconut Grove around Miami and was in that folk scene with Fred Neal and others. But this is on Capitol Records, but for some reason, there weren't many press because it is so hard to find. And in great condition near mint vinyl VG plus sleeve it's definitely one of my top 22 finds of 2022 Vince Martin love it and here's another one I've been looking for for a long time the cover's not in great condition but it was at a record show in a bargain bin for a steal of a deal it's John Martin's Solid Air. Great, great jazzy folk, jazz folk album. Um, has the original version of May You Never, a song that Eric Clapton covered. And many other good songs. The title track, Solid Air, Over the Hill, I'd Rather Be the Devil, Go Down Easy, May You Never, Easy Blues. That's on the Island label. Solid Air, John Martin. Okay, I'm trying to remember where I found this one. This was at a record store also. And he said it had a couple of scratches on it, but they were inaudible, so it was discounted. Great, great deal on Mississippi Fred McDowell's Long Way From Home on Milestone. I've got a lot of Mississippi Fred's records, but this is one that had eluded me. It said on Milestone. Yep, uh, I'm trying to remember what I got this for. I mean, it's worth 40, 50, 60 dollars. I think I paid around 20. There you go, there's some blues for you. Uh, this is another one that came in on a collection that I bought. And I had the CD probably 25 years ago, but I never, ever seen a copy of the vinyl record until I got it in that collection. And it's McDonald and Giles' Progressive Folk album, self-titled, um, on Cotillion. And what made it even better is... 
It's a white label promo. Just some great music by the Prog Rockers. There's the back. <laughs> the couple on the back cover got a little shorted on that. That's the front. But McDonald and Giles. They're getting closer to the end here. All right, this is probably my jazz find of the year in terms of value. And, uh, you know, us uh, final community members that are into jazz, always looking for those Blue Note OGs. And this was actually reissued also this year, right after I found it. But it's it's time, Jackie McLean, along with Charles Tolliver, Herbie Hancock, Cecil McBee, and Roy Haynes. And this is a genuine first pressing on Blue Note. Yeah, this was also released, I think, on a Blue Note classic. Not a tone poet, I don't think, but... This vinyl is in excellent condition, sounds incredible, so I won't be getting the reissue. This will be another forever copy for me. Jackie McLean, it's time. Here's one that actually, today's uh, New Year's Eve, this came in the mail today. Um, early last week, I did a best offer on eBay. It's one of my saved searches on eBay has been for over 10 years and I've always been outbid or it's been way too high priced, but I think I finally got a fair deal on it and it's Willie Nelson's gem of an album from 1998, Teatro. This is a double LP. This is one I bought probably the week it came out on CD and always on the record. And it's been reissued twice, uh, once on Record Store Day. This is the Record Store Day one on uh, yellow vinyl. And there's another black vinyl one that came out a couple of years later, I think. But I think they're both by Modern Classics uh, or Light in the Attic, a collaboration between Modern Classics and Light in the Attic. One of Willie Nelson's finest albums. It's got Amy Lou Harris on background vocals and uh, his harmonica player, Mickey Raphael, as usual on harmonica. And it's produced by Daniel Lenoir. So, fresh out of the box today from the U.S. Mail. Willie Nelson's Teatro. Finally got it. One of my country grails. Um, here's another country grail. Um, I've always had reissues of this. This was reissued a few times in the mid to late seventies. And I finally got an original at a record show recently. It's a cutout, but it's got that, uh, satiny cover. Willis Allen Ramsey's lone album release, self-titled, uh, incredible album. Great, great stuff. Country folk. And uh, it's on that shelter label with the blacked out Superman logo. That's an original from 1972, Willis Allen Ramsey. Check this out if you like country or folk and you've never heard it. It's a must hear. All right, let's see. Here's the last three. Uh, this one is a UK import. These things, if you found an OG or... You would never find one in the U.S. probably in the wild, but uh, this is a reissue of the U.K. jazz album by Don Rendell and Ian Carr, Five Tet, uh, Dusk Fire. I think this was recorded in 1968. No, 66. And uh, as I said, Don Rendell and Ian Carr on it, they had their hands in a lot of British jazz at that time. I've got some other stuff, but this is a UK reissue. UK originals, uh, I think they sell like up in the thousand dollar range, but EMI, 
Duskfire. Let me just show you that label. It's got a nice label. Columbia EMI. I got a pretty good deal on it from the UK off of eBay. Dustfire. All right. Here's another one. That I found this at a garage sale. I could not believe it. You don't ever see this stuff at garage sales, but uh, one of the few Lonnie Liston Smith albums that I was a gap in my collection. Uh, Cosmic Funk. This is a funky cosmic, spaced out, cosmic as it says, uh, jazz album by the uh, organist Lonnie Liston Smith, 1974, and it's on Flying Dutchman, great label. Um, I got it first steal at a garage sale, couldn't believe it, Lonnie Liston Smith. All right, here's the 22nd of my top 22 of 2022, and it's a doozy. And I got this, believe it or not, in a bargain box at a record store. Um, I think he thought it was damaged. There was a little speck in one of the grooves that was causing a skip, but I just plucked it out with my fingernail, and now it's in VG Plus to near mint condition. And it's the Sight Grail Ultimate Spinach Behold and See. Can't really see that on the front, but title on the back. I love this album. Um, Mind Flowers. <laughs> what a great, great psych song. Um, great uh, instrumentation and harmonizing, singing. Great, great album. Where You're At on the Other Side. Um, uh, Gilded Lamp of the Cosmos Visions of Your Reality Jazz Thing They get a little jazz psyche Psych going on but I think I paid I paid under $5 for this Felt a little bit guilty But like I said uh, He had it in the bargain bins Because it was skipping But I fixed that So that was my last alphabetical uh, find and one of, one of the best, if not the best. Ultimate spinach is behold and see. All right, thank y'all um, for watching as usual. Um, I'll try to make more of these, many as I can, you know, throughout 2023. And I'm a dig when I can. Uh, as you know, it's, it's a hard thing to shake. Got to keep digging, and I hope y'all have had a great year and have a great new year and a wonderful 2023, and as always, go dogs.